beautiful from a distance, and bizarre up close. This is the Roseate Spoonbill. The Roseate Spoonbill are common in coastal Florida, Texas, and southwest Louisiana. They're a social bird often found associating with other wading birds, both in South and North America. It's so fascinating to watch their behavior and their instinctual techniques and any patterns to their actions. When they hang their head in the water and sweep their bill from side to side, the motion creates little whirlpools of water that their prey gets trapped in, and once they sense it, they snap their bills shut down right on them. We're lucky to have this pink species of spoonbills that are found in the Western Hemisphere because they're only one of six species worldwide. The other five spoonbills, the Royal, the Eurasian, the African, the Yellow-Bellied, and the black-faced spoonbill all occur in Asia, Europe, Africa, and Australia. But they're not born with that distinctive bill, a spatulate bill. The chicks are born with a regular shaped bill, but will start to flatten out at day 10, and they'll get the size by day 40. It's amazing to think that they were once almost hunted to extinction because of their beautiful feathers, and they've bounced back. And now, due to the effects of climate change, the range of these spoonbills is expanding significantly. In the Americas, they have been found in Georgia and the Carolinas, and have been spotted in Fairfax County, Virginia, and as far north as New York and Washington. Have you ever seen these birds in the wild before? If you have, where did you see them? Where are you from? That'd be great info. They get their pink coloration from what they eat, from the shrimp and crustaceans they ingest containing a pigment which turn their feathers pink over time. Younger spoonbills, the juveniles will be a paler shade. But again, the pink color is diet derived, consisting of the carotenoid pigment canthaxanthin and sometimes also astaxanthin. This is how also flamingos get that beautiful pink color. And sometimes people confuse flamingos and the spoonbills as well. Spoonbills will also go completely bald. They lose their feathers on their head as they get older. Adults have a bare greenish head and they'll turn a golden yellowish color during the breeding season. Also during the breeding season, their neck and back and breast area turn white with a tuft of pink feathers in the center. But overall, their colors can range from pale pink to bright magenta. Quite beautiful. But yeah, their beautiful feathers became so popular in the fashion industry that they were almost hunted to extinction in the 1800s. We've at one point almost lost these birds completely. In the 1900s, they were seen recolonizing along the Gulf Coast and now have expanded considerably in the 21st century. In 2022, this is great news, a spoonbill was discovered that had already been banded so it could be dated and it was at least 18 years old, making it the oldest known individual in the wild. Little is really known about these birds. They're typically seen feeding in shallow, fresh, or coastal waters by swinging its bill from side to side as it walks through the water, often in groups, feeding on crustaceans, mollusks, small fish, frogs and newts, just all aquatic insects, and bits of plant material and seeds and algae. Following along with the spoonbills, you might see other freshwater birds like herons and egrets. 
The spoonbills disturb the sediment as they hunt and makes the prey more available for the egrets which follow behind them. The spoonbills' long necks and legs allow them to wade in deeper waters. They can lay two to five eggs which are whitish with brown markings. They'll nest in shrubs, bushes, trees, or reeds, often in mangroves. But nestlings can sometimes fall victims to vultures, eagles, you know, hawks, and raccoons. They have natural predators like the cougars, jaguars, and alligators. They're serial monogamists, meaning they'll change partners every breeding season. And that's probably the best thing if you think about it. If they're a covering species, uh, it's best that they, they'll find whatever partner they need at the time. They're such a precious and intriguing bird species that have been saved from extinction. We've already made the mistake once. We must always focus our efforts and practice sustainability. I mean, feathers can be fabricated. We must be conscious of all of our wildlife and do what we can to preserve it and help flourish the world and all of our species for the eternal evolution of this nobility in creation.